my talk, The Precision Blade, with me in the role of the nasty peaky bastard. I will try to, to show how we need to be mm, mm, somehow digging, drilling into the mess that we created with even storming. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with even storming. Oh, quite a lot. But it looks like 50%. That's huge. So I need to make something like a recap. It's just like watching Star Wars in the, in the wrong order. But uh, let's try to do that. Um, that's a problem with uh, domain-driven design in general. We talk about domain-driven design. It's very important. It's, uh, it's critical. It's just the key for success. But nobody shows the thing. Or just because it's an NDA thing, uh, it's a core domain. It's, I cannot show my competitive advantage to the other people. So that's the reason why nobody would ever go on stage and explain what is a critical factor for success. Uh, I mean, nobody could be that stupid. So we, we are getting into something like a fight uh, type of paradox. So who can be that stupid to explain exactly a competitive advantage? OK, probably me. Uh, so this is uh, uh, more or less a little bit of my story, but it's not that important. Still recapping from the past episodes, software development is a learning process. Do you agree with that? That's not what our boss is, is thinking. Our boss is thinking that we are supposed to deliver a solution. And uh, now that's not the thing. If you start thinking about the learning that's behind it, it's, it's a totally different game. I'm going to be able to talk with, about, about it for ages. Not the topic of my talk, just the basement. That's what we are paid for, the side effect of our learning. Still, keep it in mind. And then we get into my, uh, my stuff, even storming. That, that's the way I use for exploring complex domain. That's the way I use for uh, digging into complexity and understanding what is the right thing to do. The recipe for even storming is relatively simple. It's just uh, first, you invite the right people, domain expert, technical people. You put all of them in the same room. A facilitator is needed, not pitching, but is needed. Might be one of you, no problem. Uh, provide them an unlimited modeling service and a surface. And this was a key because uh, in many, sorry, get, getting something like like uh, uh, an echo it make, makes me sound too too much like a church uh, type of stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling really embarrassed. Don't take me seriously, please. Um, but there was something tricky in the fact that we were locked into the given space, the whiteboard size or the flip chart size. We were modeling only problems that were fitting in a given space. Well, what, about, what happens if we break this uh, constraint? What happens if we start uh, going around with paper rolls and create modeling surfaces as big as we need it? It changes totally the game. Final ingredient, start modeling with domain events along a timeline. And that was the biggest game changer for me in the domain-driven design community. Well, we, we started thinking uh, in 10 years ago uh, with, with the traditional patterns. But the moment we started thinking with, with domain events, we ended up triggering a totally di different conversation. So, Really simple explanation. What is a domain event for me? It's this thing, an orange sticky note with the verb at past tense, which is relevant for domain expert. It just has to be orange. All the rest is really, really easy. So we end up with something like that, or even bigger than that. Then it grows, and when it, while it grows, you start having a conversation. You start discussing about how did you call it in that way, and then you start adding more information, like. Uh, external systems and what else you are talking to, what, what other uh, system you are interacting with. And then while you discuss, people would start complaining. And then that's the reason why you need a facilitator to start writing all the problems, the hotspot, the thing people are worried about. They might be risks, they might be critical thing, they might be just like, oh, this step is crap. People are going to be emotional during this workshop. And then you capture all of the things. And then you have something like a big map of the whole mess. Nothing is left out. And then you finally see, look at it, oh, oh. This mess is us. We are exactly this crap. And, but, but then it's not, it's not like a, a self-inflicting yourself a punishment. It's just, a, 
now I can see what the problem is. The problem is probably in, in, that, in that area. So the first round of exploration and the, all the emotion and the body language and everything that is involved is just like finally seeing what was hidden under the carpet or uh, between organizational silos for many, many years. Then we have this big, colorful, weird artifact to look at. And what do we do next with that? Well, the goals of the first round, and uh, which means that I started to explicitly separate what happens in the first round, which is called big picture, to uh, separating it from what happens in the second round. But anyway, the goals from the, from the first round is uh, basically understanding the whole thing, boosting the learning at the large scale. Goal number one is, are we solving the right problem? You look at it. You look at the mass, and if uh, all the problems are located into this area, and they're asking you or your team to solve the problem right here, maybe this is not the problem really worth solving. Maybe the thing that we are supposed to solve is this one. I mean, it, it, it looks really, really trivial once you, once you see that, but before seeing that, I feel so, many, so much money thrown away in trying to solve uh, a not so important problem here, just because they didn't want to solve this one, because there were, well, egos involved and many other uh, political reasons for doing that. But domain-driven design is not for every problem. You don't use domain-driven design to solve simple problems over there. You won't use it only where it pays off, and this is probably the place where it pays off. And uh, yes, little suggestion, please have a read to the goal if you haven't. Still valid, still... Uh, saying a lot of good things. Um, the second thing is, uh, well, is, does it really matter? I already spoiled uh, a little the thing like uh, you don't use domain-driven design in the wrong places, but let me be more explicit. Just uh, in the core domain where details are making a difference, I try to be creative, looking for alter alternatives, looking for new solutions, refining them, and uh, being a perfectionist, and in the core domain where this matters, well, this is awesome. Yeah, you just get good, good result. Put the same people somewhere else in a fixed budget, not critical part of the domain, no, not, not a big difference. Being creative, looking for alternatives, refining solution, perfectionist. No, that this is exactly the same approach, but here you are a troublemaker, you're delaying a project, you're just uh, uh, wasting company money gold plating. It just makes a lot of difference. Second thing is, can we succeed? I mean, I'm, even if I try to look like a teenager, I'm 45, and uh, I don't want to waste years on, on, the, on, the wrong, uh, on the wrong project. And, uh, one of the things I've learned is just you can see from the very beginning projects which are heading in the right direction or projects which are, which are doomed to fail. And, uh, and that's exactly the other valuable outcome of even storming. You're making the risk uh, observable. You're explicitly asking for risk, risk in terms of hotspot or external system. It's never exactly in your code the problem. The problem is interacting with somebody else's code or external system or somebody else, people. I mean, we, we are so obsessed with the technical side and don't realize that the real risk is uh, what happens not on the model, happens on the other side. But you can see both of them. You can see external systems and hotspots and critical points, places where the flow is, uh, is blocked, and you can also see people in politics. You can see people not talking to each other. You can see people arguing without any reason just by running the workshop. So, to summarize, even storming is my walking skeleton. The risk is not in the systems, not only in the system, it's mostly in the people. I touch all the people. Well, not literally, but yes. And um, so, what I expect as an outcome for my recap is just we are on a problem worth solving. And the solution is, OK, finally, that's a problem. We don't have to wait. Let's prototype a solution right now. Uh, if the problem is somewhere else, well, maybe don't call me. Maybe there's no need to get to use uh, uh, fancy technology or uh, domain-driven design or uh, 
even sourcing other technologies. Let's use the money more wisely. Let's move or yeah, end up. They can't even agree on the problem. And solution is pretty easy. Well, shake hands, smile, and leave quickly, quietly. And uh, yes, let's assume we are, in, we are in the hotspot. So the hotspot is, is just uh, uh, creating a situation where uh, we basically don't need the backlog anymore. We have one big problem to solve, and well, what happens next might be well, totally unknown. We don't really care. One thing that changes is just uh, the team during, during the workshop. It's just uh, we need a domain expert, only the one which are really involved, not anyone. I mean, people are still free to join in or check out, but uh, we don't need the whole uh, uh, bunch of uh, domain experts uh, talking about things that they don't care about. But we need the team, including UX. We need a facilitator and the normal interfaces. Another thing is just uh, normally when you have an even storming with the big guys, you're time constrained. I mean, you, you are just uh, maximizing the outcome given the fact that in two hours you get to clean up and leave. But if you're looking for design and precision, well, you, you probably need to well finish when you feel you're finished, not when, oh, time run out, let's implement this uh, partially defined crap for the, this, uh, uh, this iteration. No, it doesn't work like that. And uh, I promised I was going to be stupid enough to talk about my domain. And uh, so let's talk about the real one and problems we, we faced in, in, in this one in, in my uh, small company, so not big corporate stuff, but still we can see some, uh, some progression. Well, we work in private and public training and workshops, so domain which is uh, relatively easy. I don't need to say uh, much more than this. So we ran some even storming. That's the same domain I use in some uh, um, public workshop. On, so we've been digging into, into that. There's something weird that happens during the uh, exploratory session is something that is very peculiar to domain driven design is is something uh, to even storming sorry it's something that we do basically not to bore people it's uh, we have people guess what the solution can be you just write what you think is a reasonable implementation a, a reasonable uh, set of domain events in the domain and we'll discuss only about the domain the domain events which are wrong which is not exactly the most natural thing to do. We, in a traditional meeting, uh, you normally have the domain expert expecting to have people listening to his type of uh, uh, wisdom, and then, okay, now I'm going to explain you how my system is working. Of course, we need to have registered users. Well, the users need to be registered in order to log in the system. And this is so boring. You're really wasting many people's time telling something which we already know. We are developers. Heavy systems have some kind of user profiling. Please talk about the real stuff. The weird thing is just we don't know what the real stuff is. The real stuff is what we guess wrong. The thing I realized by working with people like you it's just developers are pretty good guessers. I mean, we are problem solvers. We are, have a pretty good imagination. We are guessing it right. Not 100% of the time, but let's say 75, 80, 90% of the time. Which just says, like, probably this 70% of the time it shouldn't be used for the conversation. Let's talk only about the thing which is... Uh, wrong that can be improved. So it's a learning process, again, for the people trying to understand the mechanics and skipping the boring part is probably the most important thing. And uh, I have time for this. The real reason why I'm not a piano player, it could be a good ex explanation. Uh, let's say I was a kid. I was uh, five, six years old. and. Uh, I had a piano because my, my father was playing, and uh, I was able to play some song. I mean, nothing really great. I was not. I was able to play some some stupid song for like a four or five years old uh, kid can do. But it was already something. Then uh, I was uh, suggested to join a, a music school. I went to the music school, and for for the first two weeks, they just taught me about. Uh, well, this is the pentagram, these are the notes, you write them in this way. And after two weeks, 
when is that we are starting to play? Oh no, you need to do the I don't know the, the term, the, the the singing on on a note, and this was so boring. I I quit a couple of weeks later because I never had the time to go exactly starting from the level where I was to the next level, or somebody showing me, oh like, can you do that? Oh, okay, that's gonna be challenging for me and move on. It wasn't challenging. I never got the interest to become a real piano player. So you're safe and the world is better. Anyway, this, this is it's just how we start the process. We start digging into a new uh, process by doing mistake, And there is no point in trying to do it right from the beginning. Actually, the fun part is try to do it wrong and understand why it's wrong, because this is where the right conversation happens. So this might be this one of the normal starting point. This is one of the most common guesses from uh, uh, people doing, taking the workshop. So we have a training class bot. And now, yeah, now I'm trying to be the picky bastard again. Training class bot. Yeah. So does it mean you bought actually a training class? So now the training class is yours. It, this is what you mean when you say uh, training class bot. What happens if I have uh, 15 people joining a training class? Is this split between the people? I mean, no, does it also mean that the training class isn't mine anymore? I had the training class on my website, so you bought it. Mm. Mm. Maybe you didn't really buy a training class, but if you can just uh, get in in a way like without being as bastard as I was, but like uh, uh, trying to, to challenge every, uh, every step a little without uh, making it feel people uncomfortable, you could get something better, like, oh, maybe it was not the training class. Maybe, uh, actually, we bought a ticket or we bought a seat for a, a training class or a conference or whatever. Oh, I like the ticket. Ticket explains it a little bit more, but for many reasons, nobody gets to the ticket at the first shot. So we have to try, fail, and, and move on. Well, ticket looks like, uh, well, it has some, some, some type of uh, very simple life cycle. We can buy it, we can use it, and then gone. Well, let's, let's model it using our, our little uh, vocabulary. Orange is a domain event, so we have a ticket bought and a ticket used. Well, and then you buy a ticket and they use a ticket as a command. So you, you are expecting some type of uh, symmetry. Uh, still doesn't look perfectly okay. And uh, let's find some candidate names. So we are refining a lot. Let's try with valid or used. Not really perfect, but uh, that's okay. And uh, looks too simple at the moment. But then you have the people, and the people start asking something like, what, what, if, what, what if somebody doesn't show up? You're challenging with different hypotheses. You, you, you have many people trying to act like uh, picky bastards uh, as well. Like, uh, what if somebody doesn't show up? Oh, yes. Well, the ticket is bought, but it's never used. Uh, well, can I use it another time? Well, actually, no. We we might say the ticket expires. So, well, let's make a, a little bit uh, a little bit more uh, more information into this one. Okay. Well, so we have one more domain event, and we have uh, a question: Do I expire a ticket? I'm missing something. Well, it is not me. I can buy it. I can use it. It's probably the same people, or maybe not. But definitely, who expires a ticket? Uh, it just. Uh, there's something missing, and it's probably time. Well, the ticket doesn't expire because of somebody saying so, or maybe. just expires because it's too late. Well, the event already started, and, uh, and uh, it's not time. It might be changing if the event is repeatable or not, but yeah, we're adding more and more stuff. Almost getting there. There is some type of symmetry inside, inside this one. It might be small enough to um, have a look, really simple, but uh, it just starts having a, a little bit more uh, dignity into, into the thing. So we have a ticket, uh, and, uh, and it starts in, in a valid cycle, gets expired. Is it an aggregate? Is it the thing that you would call an aggregate? It looks, looks like basically a single state variable. Is it big enough to be a variable or to be an aggregate? I would say probably yes. It doesn't have to be big, and we're gonna see the reason why they don't have to be uh, to be big. There are many reasons why we need 
to think they have to be big, and one might be the name, or I'll aggregate, you need to put things together, uh, but maybe the things to put together really are really uh, small. There might be something missing in there. We're going to talk about it. Again, we are still building it. It looks like it's OK. Whenever it looks OK, start challenging the model. Start add, adding more complexity. You have uh, a round of little busters trying to build something which is uh, tolerating the, the, the fantasy of, of the others. What else can happen to our ticket? Well, if you drop a question like this, you might have a domain expert telling the real story. That's a good question. Can we transfer a ticket? Well, in fact, it never happens within individual purchases. They usually ask for a refund. I mean, it's just me buying the ticket. I can't show up. I discover that I have uh, uh, something else to do exactly on the same day. No problem. Uh, they might be asking to reuse a ticket for another thing. That might be a possibility, but uh, that uh, um, different edition or, or uh, yeah, whatever. What can happen instead is companies buying a group ticket, asking to switch people or delaying uh, participant names till the very last moment. That wasn't the simple answer we wanted from the domain expert. I mean, the, 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 the phenomenon which is happening is just uh, you ask a simple question because you are praying for a simple answer because you want to finish the stuff. And instead, what you get is just, uh, well, I'm going to tell you the whole story. And the whole story is telling that, well, you have companies asking for group tickets, which you didn't have in your model, that then you probably have a new operation switching people, or this is something like an implicit idea of anonymous ticket. Oh, that was supposed to be easy. It's getting really, really messy. Well, that's what happens when you start asking questions and when people are starting to tell the story. The main difference in, that happens in even storming compared to traditional approaches, different approaches I've seen, is just uh, that I love this mess. I love when people start dropping me all, all of all this complexity and, uh, well, we have enough space to master all of this complexity. Let's see if we can solve even that problem too. Oh, but that's going to be more expensive. No, for not yet. We, we just, uh, the only thing that's going to be more expensive now is stickies. Do we have enough orange stickies to capture all, all of this? Do we have enough space to cover all this stuff? But it's not reducing the size of the problem and it's going to drive you into a better solution. It's just, I want to see the whole mess. So solution number one, over and over, is still this one. Add more space. You start with a, what you thought it was an unlimited modeling service. Well, that's way bigger than anything I, I, I've used before. And half an hour later, you realize, oh, shit, we need another one. Because what happens in our brain is just we are trying to solve uh, a problem at the beginning, and then we are trying to, well, I need to model this without getting out from the border. And now it's tricky because it's almost filled up. So keep the problem simple, which is uh, remove every extra constraint that might be hidden in your brain. Availability of markers, availability of space, uh, uh, trying not to touch some other system. No, this is free, trying to find the best solution. Then we are in good brainstorming more than then you will have some anonymous developer telling what if its ticket is an abstract class? We solve the problem with the group ticket in this way, with individual and group tickets as separate subclasses. No, don't do that. If you've been modeling uh, object-oriented with uh, uh, ostriches and animals and birds and that, that type, no, you don't want to do that. Uh, but we have an extra solution. It's just that uh, we invited the right people. Which means <laughs> that we don't have to follow requirements as prescriptions. We have the people in the room. We can, we can discuss, we can uh, explore the problem in a cheap way with stickies and decide later not to implement. Let's have a better conversation. There is no need for any automatic operation. If only, it only happened once. We have only one cancellation in, in, uh, uh, in four years. So do we need to put money in that? No. End of the story. But I need to know the story. I need to be aware that this is possible. I need to know that uh, this flow, this uh, approach is not 
threatening the solidity of, of the model, and I could say, well, OK, little thing, no problem. So talking with the right people, we might get the answer we like. The real thing is just uh, people are trying to keep the domain complexity small because they have the fear that we, they have to implement everything. No, it's never been, been, been the goal. The complexity is in the domain. I need to master this. I need to learn about what really happens in all the corner cases. I would not go on implementing everything. But I need to see which are the options in order to discard them. Let's make it more explicit and cheaper. Make it visible. First, make everything visible. Then, ignore it. If you're ignoring things but by hiding them, not wise. You're going to probably have troubles later. Um, then we are digging into this thing. We are trying to clean up something like, what about private classes? Aren't they the same thing? Maybe. Let's look at this. Uh, private classes, public classes, well, we put them on the website, uh, maybe in two different sections. Well, but they both have headline, description, duration, trainer. With the public class, we just already declared the city, the date, and the venue. And there's more, clearly. So looks like there is some kind of correlation. But if we start thinking about the behavior, well, that's not exactly the same thing. It's just the private class has a mostly sales and negotiation type of flow, while this one is, is, is more like event management. So there's nothing really in common with that. Maybe some terms, but they don't mean exactly the same thing. And uh, so, no, they are not the same thing. And, uh, we could be safe in keeping them separated. Let's be more explicit. It's not exactly like that. We could see that there was something that was uh, more common, and it was uh, in content definition, well, the process of creating uh, good text and good description for a training class is exactly the same in this bounded context. It's totally different here in sales because we have two flows and we can just keep the flows separated. And uh, so again, ostrich are safe. Um, it was another little idea that popped out uh, uh, along the way, which was the idea about seats. Uh, well, you remember it was, uh, well, let's buy a ticket, let's buy a seat. Well, it, the seat was not really a great idea because uh, well, the ticket was a clear winner. You don't actually buy the seat for a training class. The seat is not yours. You cannot bring it at home. And so if we challenge the, the, the language in a, in a picky way, no, 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 you don't. You don't buy a seat. Well, maybe you can reserve a seat, but it's, uh, we decided that ticket was better. But the term seat started to resound. Why do we have a seat? And uh, actually, there's... Uh, it's not only tickets, it's just something that happens when you execute the, the, the training class. And it's also uh, lunch breaks, uh, coffee breaks, uh, and we, we, we need to count some, uh, some numbers. So is it a seat and a ticket the same thing? Uh, maybe yes, and maybe not. So it might be that there is some connection between the seat and, uh, and the ticket, and we are missing one thing which is in, in the middle. And this is one of the things that we struggled at the beginning in the even storming community, uh, trying to understand what was uh, the formal way uh, to, to manage this relationship. I, I, at the beginning, that link was kind of implicit uh, just to discover it, or maybe because the, the first workshop were really short, so we couldn't get to the end of it. Anyway, there's something that needed to be explored, which is the connection between an event happening in one place and another event happening somewhere else. And uh, the key word for this is whenever. Whenever a ticket is sold, a ticket is reserved. Uh, again, we struggle a little to come up with a term uh, uh, for, for, uh, for this thing. And uh, I, I think I got a suggestion both from uh, uh, Greg and Udi at different, uh, different times. And uh, policy is a good name for it. We, we've been using different names, uh, maybe we have process or uh, whenever box or reactive logic, whatever. It just like, uh, feels like we needed some type of symmetry. There was something that was reacting to events, and whenever was the best way to introduce this type of uh, uh, box in the conversation without introducing a formal notation. And uh, it looks like Really, really, this looks like over-design, isn't it? 
Do we need the process between a, a ticket sold and a seat reserved? Probably over design. But uh, let's ask, are they the same thing? Well, no. It turns out that in this domain, well, seats for lunch break and coffee break, well, they include the speaker. I mean, they, they, the trainer needs to eat as well. The trainer might come with a friend or a co-trainer, or it might be somebody visiting, or it might be somebody from, from my own company just uh, uh, being, uh, uh, being there, or seats has nothing to do with the participants and, and, uh, and ticket. There is some relationship, but it's definitely not the same thing. And um, so it's two different things, only they look very, very close. And uh, again, two independent models. Well, models are popping out. They just get out from, from the walls like in Aliens. And uh, it feels like weird. And, uh, and if you, there's one reason why this is uh, a totally different uh, a uh, different bounded context where we can talk about it. And I've been experimenting in reality because I would think, oh, I just need the trainer plus the number of participants. No, in real world, what happens? If you go to the restaurant, you don't get any special food if you're the trainer. So it's totally different thing. They don't care about you. You just a sit in the restaurant and in the coffee break. Nothing special. Do you need to make this explicit? Do you need to create a bounded context for that? Well, that's an implementation choice, but you need to be aware that that problem is different. The real reason why is behind this graph. This is uh, what happens in every developer's life. There are only two main categories of problem. It's just uh, of problems. This is too easy to bother, trivial stuff. Well, well I don't really, really care about this thing. It's just like, oh, this is a mess. And I don't know what happened here in the twilight zone where I was just passing this border. There's nothing like, oh, this problem is just fine. It's exactly the type of complexity that I love. It doesn't work like this. We are always, or too easy to bother, or how did I get there? And, and for me, it just, uh, I realized that the moment I was crossing the line, it was I wasn't realizing that there were two problems overlapping in the same place. If you realize that they are overlapping, you can keep them separated. More precisely, well, we can, we can make it more explicit, like whenever we sell a ticket, we have a reservation uh, policy that reserves a seat, but we can also reserve seats manually for guests and people like that. Yeah. Do we have to implement it? Well, that's a totally different story. I mean, knowledge and awareness should come almost for free. Implementation, yeah, might be expensive. And, oh, I forgot this one. Bounded contacts are heavy. Well, not necessary. They are language boundaries. They don't have to be necessarily microservices, separate modules, or anything like that. It's awareness. You need to know that the two problems are separated then, well, microservices are fine. Go for this if you like it. But they're not necessarily the same thing. The other thing, it just depends a lot on the money. Understand it should be cheap. Oh, no, we decided not to understand the problem because it was too expensive. That's incredibly dumb. So try to make understanding as cheap as possible, then decide whether to spend the money, uh, what it's worth. But uh, like it happens in every in every session, well, even if it feels like this is the core and we need to focus, no, we get into the brainstorming mode and uh, we, we kind of were a little bit uh, uh, moving around. I was cheating. I needed to explain a little bit uh, uh, also of, of, uh, of the process. But now let's drill. I want to see what was the core, what was the blocker. And the blocker in this system, it has been for a while that problem over there. Well, it was, was probably a little bit more in here, but uh, yeah, I put the, the lilac thing over there. So, real problem. We were stuck in go no go decision. The moment I, the company grew a little, everybody was expecting me to be the person saying like, well, this training class is going on, or this training class is going to be canceled. But I was traveling, and I was uh, yeah, not there, and people were waiting for me to make the decision. I was. Uh, waiting for them to take over my role of making the decision, and this was not a nice moment. And uh, what we needed to have is just, uh, okay, let's have a session, let's discuss together what is needed in order to make this, uh, this decision. 
the decision process was trapping my brain. We needed to make it visible. So that was the key. That, well, that was the question we've been asking all the time. What is the data needed in order to make this decision? We sketched it. We visualized what was needed. That we had even a little bit more than this, but uh, uh, we needed the headline just to remember what was the, the training, uh, what was uh, the trainer name, date and location. Well, how many days were missing till, till the date? How much money we were losing or making? How many tickets sold? Well, the leads, the current price, because maybe we were not selling because we were too expensive, but there was another training class uh, uh, cheaper uh, somewhere, somewhere else. And uh, what was going on on our social advertising? Well, there were, in the early days, some classes that were not uh, sold because nobody knew they were on sale. So well, we needed to be sure that uh, uh, we had something, something going on. But to make this decision, yes, you need to, what's well, a fairly big amount of thing to be aware of. It's, it's, it's planning, it's sales, it's capacity, it's uh, tracking expenses. I mean, expenses were also coming from hotels, room, and, and stuff like that. It's a lot of stuff. How many aggregates should I query to get this stuff? Any hypothesis? I should I query Twitter too? Facebook? We used even Google+. Plus. Uh, no, did that querying aggregates totally didn't make sense. And so, no, it's not about querying aggregates. What, what we needed was to have something that was uh, able to answer this question. We needed to emphasize what was the data needed in order to make this decision. But decision was a key word. We were stopped, we were stuck in our flow due to a critical decision, and we needed to make this decision uh, clearer. We needed to make this data easily available readable, and sensible to, for the people making critical decisions. Implementation-wise, so many options open. Projection, that's my favorite way at the moment. Composite UI, that's the other thing that I was using, including mashups. I mean, again, I don't want to query uh, Twitter, but I might need to show Twitter exactly in the same place. Well, Google stuff, the normalization, Google queries, I just... <sighs> Can, can you be a vegan for queries? Because I, I haven't uh, used the join in the last two years. And, uh, and I feel so, so happy about it. I mean, it, it's not like uh, uh, that uh, you should do, but it's just like stretching. I'm just, I, can, I can make a system without joins, and I love that. And um, but this stuff worked, actually, that just by showing the thing, the data that we needed uh, to, in order to make this decision, well, the bottleneck moved away. People were able to make this decision safely, and that was working pretty well. That was exactly the thing we needed to do. And to be totally honest, uh, I implemented this. I mean, the people basically used the, the sketch we, we kept on using the, the paper version because it was already solving the problem. Uh, I just implemented the thing because I wanted to finish my exploration. And uh, we moved the bottleneck, great success. So what happens? The of conference is telling us once you solve the problem on the bottleneck, the bottleneck moves uh, somewhere else. You don't know if it's uh, before or after, but you have the people, and people will realize that, oh, now this is our biggest problem. And our biggest problem was, yeah, more critical. It was, yeah, more critical, which was, uh, we don't sell enough. Okay, well, it looks like, oh, we know this stuff. Uh, it's, again, a user making the decision of buying a ticket. So we need to set up a good read model for that. Great, repeatable story. Well, let's move on, it's smooth. We just need the data needed in order to make decision. What is the date needed in order to make this decision? It wasn't exactly that simple. One reason, just data is just data, but it's not exactly data. So we might have something like this. I'm not talking about training classes. This is a, yeah, we're describing what the pizza is. It is food, provides calories and the energy. You can survive till the next meal, several sizes and topping. Wow. Or you can just show something in that way. It's a totally different thing. I mean, data-wise, 
different. The thing is, we are switching the problem solving into decisions. And we realized that well, some decisions, mostly the internal one, we wanted to keep them rational. So helping them, showing the data in the easiest possible way to make decisions. But when you have users, people around, it's emotions. It's just a language. It's just the implicit communication that you bring in, and it's making a lot of difference. So. It's something like, wow, this is not our job. I mean, we are domain-driven design experts. We don't do this type of things. But if you're trying to solve the problem, just uh, well, nobody said anything. But uh, I mentioned that user experience is part of the game, especially for the decisions which are outside your local control. The other thing that was uh, tricky, popping up from the same, very same discussion, was uh, well, it's not exactly the same data. Well, what's the data needed in order to buy a ticket? It is different. A freelancer, a freelancer is just using his own money in order to learn something which is valuable for his career. And the easy guys know the money, knows the stuff, buys immediately, follows on Twitter, great guys. An employee, oh, that's tricky. It's not his money, he needs permission. And uh, it's looking to a different set of data. Well, the manager, manager is managing the company money, so it depends a lot on the budget. Maybe group ticket might be interesting. Calendar is way more important. We like this training class, but it's not in the right day. We have a delivery, massive delivery on that weekend, so we can't. Uh, HR, that's the final one. They, um, I don't know if this is offending for anybody, they have no clue about what the, the topic is all about, while well, those guys have an idea, but they look for totally different information. They need, well, uh, information that is putting them safe. I'm not buying tickets from a lousy company, and if I can show that I managed to have a little discount, uh, then I'm doing my, uh, my, my job great. They are not deciding upon the same type of data. So maybe trying to solve the problem everywhere is not the right solution. And that was kind of a messy, oh, so how do we do that? Well, we did, did something simple. We choose a target, define an experiment, really focus on that target, and it really worked. I mean, I'm not talking about great money, but we could show that, oh, 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 uh, that, that changed something in the, in the, in the whole behavior. And uh, so <coughs> the thing that I wanted to get into, just that we started from the domain events, we started a conversation, we started a process that felt like uh, rambling. We were looking initially for symmetries, for uh, uh, trying to find the complementary um, events, uh, what happens in the opposite cases, thing that domain uh, uh, developers are really uh, good at normally. And we ended up finding that, uh, well, we need to talk uh, in given steps of the flow to given emotions. We need to take control of the data. We need to decouple the data needed. The data is needed for decision, not to be compliant to the aggregate structure. And we realized that the two problems are totally, totally different. The most important thing for, for me whenever we are running this session is just uh, the question that we are trigger. I think the last one was really important, like uh, what is the information needed for, for in order to make the decision? And when the answer is, well, it depends. It depends on what? It depends who you are. Well, who you are, that we are getting into the myth. And the, there is no specific structure in order to get there, but uh, you keep drilling till you, you get the answer you, uh, you want. Well, there is some structure, but it's not mandatory, just like more like a toolbox than a structure. So people care a lot about the notation, but no, it's just, just a tool. It's about the question that we can trigger and the fact that we, we are having a really, really short loop between the question and the answer, because in the same room we have the same people that could provide a good answer and also tell us, well, look, this is a good idea, but it's not really relevant. It's not moving the money, so it's totally safe uh, to explore it with stickies and then to throw it away. And uh, that's the other, that was a little bit of a game changer for me. In one way, we went, we, in the early days, we were uh, running an event storming 
on a domain that was uh, way more technical. It was something like uh, um, technical. It was something like uh, video uh, video streaming. And uh, we ran the session. We felt like, yeah, it, it was okay. But actually, nobody had anything more than a normal modeling session. And uh, but it, it it was fun uh, anyway. But uh, uh, that did that didn't give any any edge, and I realized what the reason why it gives an edge in in many other situations. There were not people involved. That was, it was a technical to technical communication. So we were basically modeling a chain of uh, filters and adapters and so on, making it colorful, but no surprises. There was no ambiguity in the technical components' behavior. While you have people, you have tons of ambiguity. So digging into that ambiguity and starting that conversation, that's the reason why the, the, the even storming approach is so uh, interesting. The other thing is just uh, we are modeling a business flow, and the business flow is decision, decision taken by users, decision taken by machine within processes and, and, and aggregates. But mostly, most of the time, the bottlenecks are in decision taken by humans. Just and uh, we can help those decisions, we can design more uh, useful uh, read models and, uh, and, and help those decisions because that's going to be the game changer. Another thing, in the process, you saw many, many things popping out. We're going to have a lot of them. It uh, doesn't have to be a problem, but not, not all of them are worth pushing. Just, uh, yeah, that's this, it's part of, uh, part of the game. Try to make them visible and then be aware that maybe one day, but who cares? You're never going to forget it. It's not like uh, you're doing a jam session, you have something fantastic, this inspiration you're going to forget and it's never going to come back again. It's still a logical process. So if that problem becomes relevant, the same idea is going to be uh, popping up or maybe you're going to discover that it was a, a crappy idea. To wrap it up, that's a model I use for every uh, business software. It's exactly the same, the same flow. Users are making decisions based on the real-world experience and what they see on the screen. We can call them commands. I like to call them decision. They get into our system or external system. They become events which can trigger back some commands or can be interpreted into real models and made it readable into, into screens. It's all this human-based decision, sorry, system-based decision, and some, some translation for uh, readability. The goal is not to write cool software. That, that was a surprise for me. I I'm, I'm a, used to be a software developer. I still consider myself a software developer. And I hate when the solution is not to write software. But sometimes the solution is not the right software. The goal is to solve the right problem. The tools keep the model simple. So look for simplicity, but you can't have one large simple model, many, many simple models, split on purpose, split on language. And uh, that's probably the, the most surprising thing for me when I started diving into even storming. And diving is probably the right word. You can't achieve simplicity if you don't embrace the, the chaos before, because you're denying portion of the problem. It's just like uh, uh, putting your room in order by, yeah, let's put everything on the floor and then realize exactly what should be in the winter, what should be in the summer, what should be in the sport clothing, and, and so on. But, oh, yes, that's also that thing, denying them, is not going to uh, lead you in the right, uh, uh, right direction. The other thing that I realized during, during this process is just... Uh, we are trying to solve too many problems at once. We don't realize it. It's just like trying to model something without getting out from the boundaries of the whiteboard, without touching the system. And uh, so the counter is it's finishing. So there are, there are two, uh, two things. One problem is modeling the flow. And it's complex enough, but modeling the flow within the space constraints is just like implementing a great, great system without touching the legacy one. This is accidental, self-inflicted complexity, and nobody will pay you for it. So remove all the extra constraints in order to get great, uh, uh, great modeling, great solution, and great awareness. So that was really the last one, so overrun by 30 seconds. And uh, 
yeah, if you want to know more, uh, we are setting up all, all the thing I've, I've been writing all, all the winter, and uh, it's going to be live uh, really, really soon on on, uh, on Limpa. But before that, if you have any questions, I don't know if I have any little time now. No, but I'm gonna be around here for for the next day. So grab me, stop me, uh, ask me whatever whatever you want. I'm gonna talk uh, till you escape. And uh, so thank you very much.